Well, well, well. Here we are, the end of 2022, and we've had over 10 million cases of COVID. Uh, the Australian Health Department, of course, stopped counting around September sometime because I think it was getting too embarrassing to admit that despite with over 20 million people being vaccinated, over half the country had caught COVID. Whatever happened to protecting you? Whatever happened to protecting you? But we don't want to talk about that anymore. We'll just pull it off the website and not discuss it. We will not discuss it. And then we've got the excess deaths that uh, Senator Babbitt talked about before. Uh, we had 8,706 extra deaths last year, despite the fact that New South Wales locked down for three months. So, in theory, the deaths should have been lower, like they were in 2020. But let's not count 2021 in the ABS, ABS figures. Or sorry, 2020, they're not counting. Let's pretend nothing happened there. Almost 140,000 jab injuries. More than all the injuries reported from vaccines since 1971. More than all the injuries put together. You've got an injury rate that's three times higher, and yet the TGA don't want to look at the signal. The whole point of having a database where doctors report these injuries, where they tick the box suspected, and as the doctors say, they don't fill these forms out because they don't have the spare time. They don't have a lazy 20 or 30 minutes sitting around filling these forms out if someone caught, uh, fell off a bike. No, no, they're ticking uh, these boxes because they believe that the vaccine caused the injury that they are reporting. And yet the uh, TGA want to pretend that there's nothing to see here. And why wouldn't they? Because Professor Skerritt is head of an organisation uh, that is funded by Big Pharma. That is funded by Big Pharma. Now, if you want to talk about a conflict of interest, that's it. That's it. And these guys have no idea what they are talking about. I asked Professor Brendan Murphy, who was the chief health officer at the time, whether or not he'd actually read the non-clinical report into the Pfizer vaccine. Guess what? He hadn't read it. Despite that, he'd been saying for the last uh, a couple of days earlier that the spike protein wasn't in the blood. Well, had he read the report, he would have known that they never even tested the spike protein. And they would have also known that when they did the animal trials, that the report said there was no difference in lung inflammation between the placebo group and the vaccinated group after nine days. There was not one skerrick of evidence that showed that that vaccine was effective. But did anyone in this chamber right here, right now, actually read that report? I bet you not. But you all went out there and said it was safe and effective where you didn't have a clue what you were talking about. And shame on you because the law in this country the law in this country in the Australian immunization register says you cannot be coerced into taking a vaccine number 1 and number 2 is that you need to be properly informed about what is in the vaccine now you've got to dig very far to get to the bottom of this stuff but that spike protein in the vaccine isn't even the same as the spike protein in the virus no 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 they've actually changed one of the nucleotides and they've actually got a synthetic gene in the vaccine. They've added 70 adene uh, uh, nucleotides to the poly A tail, which is designed to make it last longer. It's designed to last longer. The mRNA in the trials was shown to last for up to nine days. The lipids were shown to last at least two days, uh, and they stopped the trials, despite the fact that it doubled. It doubled yeah, listen to this, Senator Hanson Young. Despite the fact that the concentration of the lipids that are cationic, that are cationic, were doubled in the ovaries from day one to day two. You know what they did? They stopped the trial. They stopped the trial and they went and told everyone that it just stays at the site of injection. Well, that was a blatant lie. If you want to talk about misinformation, go and check out page 44 of the non Pfizer non-clinical trial report. It's, it was released on the TGA FIO disclosure log, 239-6. I've read it numerous times. And guess what? You should also read the top paragraph of page 8 that says that the study suggests that the spike protein can be either inserted into the membrane or secreted from the cell. Now, what does that tell you? I'll tell you what that tells you. It tells you that rather than actually killing the actual pathogen, which is what a normal vaccine would have done. This particular vaccine goes inside your cell, takes over the reproduction, the ribosomes, which is what produces the uh, protein, 
and then starts producing more of the toxic substance. That is not the name of the game. You would want to actually kill the virus. You do not want to reproduce it. And of course, Senator, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Brendan Murphy, the Chief Health Officer, claims that there's nothing to worry about. He never read the document. And then we've got Professor Kelly. Of course, he came out and made the bold statement that it stops transmission. Well, he was lying because the FDA came out in December 20 and said that there was no evidence that the vaccine stopped transmission. And when I pressed him on it, there's no trials to show that there's any IgA in the mucosal system. Okay, you don't have to take my word for it. Go and speak to Robert Clancy, Australia's foremost immunologist and vaccinologist. Okay, he's retired. You can trust this guy. He's not on the take from big pharma or the big universities that aren't actually interested in research. They're just interested in lining their own pockets. And then, of course, we've got the vaccine injury scheme, which is just a joke. And today and last night and day after day for the last 15 months, I get contacted by people who have had their lives destroyed by this vaccine, a vaccine that the government said was safe and effective. And if that isn't bad enough, that they, these people, and I'm looking at you people in this chamber here today, didn't read the documents, that took over someone else's body because it suited your narrative, your command and control narrative, you showed no humanity. No humanity. There are people out there that have not only injured, they have lost their jobs and they cannot get medical support to help them. There are husbands and wives of injured couples who have had to quit their jobs to stay home and look after those people who are, are being injured are an incredible amount of pain. And the fact that you're interjecting Senator Hanson Young just goes to show the type of person you are. How Senator dare Rennick. you come into Senator this Rennick. chamber? How dare Senator you Rennick. come into this chamber Senator and Rennick. start Senator mocking Rennick. the vaccine injured? Senator Waters, now, that your point is of order. Green... Senator Rennick, please sit down. Order. Sen Senator Waters. Point of order reflecting on another senator as well as being odious and tedious. <laughs> Not the second part. Senator Rennick, just withdraw to the extent that you, you made an adverse inference. Well, the fact that the Greens Party can sit in that corner over there and mock and laugh the vaccine injured. These people aren't anti-vaxxers. They believed what the government told them, as I, as I did when I first came to this place. But I can tell you what, it's nothing but a, a cesspit of lies in this place. But the fact that the Greens Party think that they can just sit there and mock the injured. These people believed in the government. You want to talk about trust and transparency? Oh, yep, there's Senator Walters again mocking, going, come on. Maybe you should pick up the phone. Maybe you people should pick up the phone and talk to some of these people who have been injured. And then we go to the basis, the substance of this Act, the Fair Work Act. This is a public health issue. The idea that businesses in this country can be responsible for the transmission of an airborne virus is just as absurd as the billions of dollars that are getting wasted on the idea of some, some tiny trace gas in the atmosphere you can control that. I mean, we are living in the land of, of, of the unicorn farmers and the intellectual pygmies who have just chasing the impossible dream, like Sancho Panja chasing the windmills, it is absurd. And yet we stand here today, almost three years after the virus uh, uh, you know, broke out in China or whatever, and we have still got this ridiculous uh, mandate in so many places, in particular in the private industry, which is what, which is what this amendment will address and they are still being coerced into getting a vaccine. I've literally just had three messages in the last hour about people who are losing their jobs, not in the health sector, but in sectors that are outdoors, nothing to do. It is absurd. It is absurd. And it needs to stop, because the state of emergency, even at the state government level, has been retracted. And yet these people here today do not want to grant people their autonomous right to control what goes in their body. And I might remind members of the LNP that one of our values is the dignity and worth of every individual. You know, we don't believe in multi-patent bar patent bargaining because we recognise that every business is unique and we think that you know, the employer and employee should have the first right in deciding what's best for them. That is what we believe in, in empowering the individuals to make the decisions that uh, you know, 
suit their needs the best, and only the individual or the parent of the child can make that decision. But what we've got here today is typical command and control. We've got the Labor Party and the Greens protecting their own narrative, their own narrative that the government can save us. Govern me harder, Daddy. That is what these people believe in. According to the CDC and the FDA, this COVID-19 vaccine is extremely safe and effective. And if you find any contradiction in this video, you have to always trust CDC and FDA 100%. Just like this beautiful and majestic, the Emperor's new clothes, it is 100% safe and effective.